this is the panel I bought from Amazon. It mentioned in the spec sheet that it is a 30 watt panel. On the back, we can see some connecting terminals. One is for the battery direct connection, and other two are the USB connectors. In the box also came a charge controller and it also mentions in the spec sheet that it has a MPPT function. There is a charging cable for the 12 volt lead acid battery. And another cable also. And there are four suction cups. A thin transparent film is attached on the front surface, which should be removed before use. After removing the thin film, it looks a lot cleaner. The electrical characteristic of a solar cell is different from a battery. When light is incident on a silicon solar cell, the voltage is usually 0.6 volt across its terminal. And whatever the intensity is, this voltage does not vary much. What varies is the current. Higher the intensity, higher the current. When several solar cells are connected in series or in parallel, the voltage and current also changes. Series means addition of voltages and parallel means addition of currents. A solar panel consists of many solar cells connected in series. Usually the standard size solar cell, 16 cm by 16 cm, gives maximum 10 amp at the brightest sunshine, that is 1000 watt per meter square. And if we are using a 72 cell solar cell, solar panel, it gives 0.6 multiplied by 72, that is 43.2 volt. If a load is connected to a solar cell and the light intensity is fixed and the load is varying from very low resistance to high resistance, what happens? The power delivered to the load also varies. So when the resistance is very low, the power which is V multiplied by I also is low. As the resistance goes higher and higher, power also goes higher and higher. But beyond some certain point, power starts to go down. So there is a point where maximum available power from the solar panel, so our solar cell can be utilized and delivered to the load. So if the intensity changes, this maximum power point that also changes. If a maximum power point tracker or in short MPPT is connected to a panel, it tracks the maximum power all the time under all circumstances and this power is delivered to the load. So the panel which I bought from Amazon has 36 cells and each cell is 8 cm by 2.2 cm uh, meter in dimension 
and the cell area is 17.75 square centimeter. So maximum voltage available from this panel is 36 multiplied by 0.6 that is 23.76 volt. A monocrystalline solar cell of size 16.2 cm by 16.2 cm produces short circuit current of 10.84 amp and we can easily find out what the solar panel which is bought from Amazon can give us. The size of the solar cell is much much smaller than the standard size. So if we consider the ratio, it should not give us more than 0.73 amp. So the maximum available power should be around 13.9 watt. We measured the panel under very bright sunlight and what we found is maximum available power is 13.2 watt. If our solar panel is now connected to a load and the load is varied as before you know if the load is varied the power starts increasing from the very minimum to the maximum and then it goes down again and maximum available power should be 13.2 watt represented by the area as shown here so if this panel is connected to a 12 volt battery directly then uh, when the battery is fully nearly fully charged we can get the voltage across the terminal is 13 volt so the power consumed by the battery should be 9.75 watt you see this is the maximum power point and we are consuming less power than which is delivered by the panel. So now if a maximum power point tracker is used in between the panel and the battery, what happens? The maximum deliverable power now is going to the uh, battery the voltage across the battery remains the same as 13 volt only the current that is the charging current is higher now so we can measure easy, easily the function of the micro uh, maximum power point tracker the panel terminal goes to the input terminal of the charge controller and the battery output is connected to the battery and I am using a ammeter in series to measure the current. So we can directly connect the battery to the panel and measure the current and then using the MPPT and measure the current. If the current goes higher then we can say that actually the maximum power point, power point tracking is functioning properly. To test the panel, I am using a 600 watt halogen lamp. The spectrum of a halogen lamp is very close to that of sun's spectrum. Also I am using 2 meters and a small circuit to measure the characteristics of the solar panel. I am using the 600 watt halogen lamp to light up the solar panel and measuring the characteristic. To measure the characteristic, I am using 2 meters and a circuit. All the documents are given in a file which you can find at the link below the video. You can see the voltage and current is changing as I am turning the knob of the potentiometer
setup is being prepared for battery charging with the charge control battery. An emitter and a battery bank is being used. In the first test, the photovoltaic panel output is directly connected to the battery without the charge controller and the current is measured. We can see it is 0.248 amp. Now the battery is connected through the charge controller. Now you can see the charging current is 0.238 amp. It is even less than the direct connection case. Now I am going to test the USB port of the charge controller. The input is connected to the photovoltaic panel output and the USB cable is used to measure the voltage. A voltmeter is used to measure the voltage. First the halogen lamp is turned on. And the voltage is 5 volt so it is safe to use for charging any cell phone or other 5 volt device a cell phone is connected to the usb port of the charge controller and the current will be measured the cell phone charging current is 232 million approximately what the panel can deliver maximum and the panel voltage is 19.5 volt a flash lamp is also connected to the usb board to test the charge The panel gives only 13 watts instead of 30 watts, as mentioned in the Amazon homepage. The charge controller is simply a charge controller. It does not have the MPPT function. And the USB port gives 5 volt, as mentioned. For charging all types of cell phones or flash lamp is OK. The question is, is it worth buying? In my opinion, no. The price you pay can be spent to buy a better quality panel from local stores. Maybe you can buy a cheaper charge controller from Amazon, however, if it says that it has MPPT function, better not to trust it 100%.